coming up on this week's Into Tomorrow TV Update. This is not just an ordinary watch. It'll wake you up. I'll tell you how. Are you a masquerader? Find out if you are. Up next. Hello, Into Tomorrow listeners and viewers on the web. Welcome to this week's ITTV Update. I'm your host, Dave Graveline. Happy 2008. We hope you enjoyed our bloopers video last week, but if you missed it, be sure and click on more ITTV videos on the right-hand side of our show page at graveline.com. We're getting ready to invade Las Vegas next week as we broadcast from the huge International Consumer Electronics Show. We'll be doing three weeks' worth of shows. Stay tuned for our radio and plenty of video coverage from CES. It'll be time for Rob Almanza to join us a bit later with this week's Product Spotlight, and Andrea Brasino will have your tech term of the week. But first, here's Chris Graveline with This Week in Tech History. History. Thanks. This week in 1838, the telegraph was demonstrated for the first time in public at the Speedwell Iron Works in Morristown, New Jersey. The person demonstrating the new invention, the telegraph's inventor, Samuel F.B. Morse. In 1940, the Federal Communications Commission, or FCC, got its very first demonstration of FM radio. The new medium, free of interference, static, and noise in thunderstorms, was developed by Major E.H. Armstrong. The first FM transmitter was put into operation in 1941. In 1954, the duoscopic TV receiver was unveiled. The TV set allowed a person or group to watch two different shows at the same time. It was a primitive picture-in-picture -picture split screen that was tested in New York and Chicago. The set was a product of Dumont Laboratories, which owned the Dumont Television Network. That's our look back at This Week in Tech History. This Week in Tech History is brought to you by TigerDirect.com, where we're making new history every day with the best prices on laptops, plasmas, desktops, and more. Looking to actually get up better in the mornings and enjoy it? Well, here's Rob with a cool new gadget that will help you wake up refreshed. Thanks, Dave. For over 21 years, I've had trouble getting up in the mornings, and now I've found a great way to fix that using the Sleep Tracker Watch. It monitors signals from your body that indicate whether you're asleep or awake. With its internal sensors, it finds the best waking moment so you can get up easier in the mornings. I really have a hard time. You set up your alarm like any normal alarm clock. You can set it to vibrate or beep or do both. I set mine to do both because I usually don't hear anything when I'm asleep. Then you set an alarm window so that your sleep tracker can wake you up at your most awake moment during a window of time. They recommend you start with a 20 minute window, which is what I schedule. Finally, you set it to bedtime. It lets sleep tracker record your sleep data during the night so you can learn about your sleep patterns. We all have a unique sleep pattern. Sleep tracker can collect data for a maximum of eight hours. You can install its software in your computer to track your sleep patterns. It has a unique USB cable with three prongs that connect to the underside of the watch. You can also view your sleep data directly on the watch. The Sleep Tracker Pro sells under 180 bucks, which is this version. They also have a standard version that sells under $150. You can visit graveline.com for more information on the Sleep Tracker. Back to you, Dave. Thanks, Rob. I'm glad you're getting up better now in this new year. Let's be sure you keep it up. Andrea joins us now and invites you to her masquerade or something like that. Thanks, Dave. This week's tech term reminds me of Halloween. The tech term is masquerade, and it's when a person uses the identity of another to gain access to a computer. So it's basically a disguise. In terms of communication, a masquerade is a type of attack where the attacker pretends to be an authorized user of a system in order to gain access to it. Masquerade may be attempted through the use of stolen IDs and passwords. The attempt may come from within an organization, for example, from an employee, or from an outside user through some connection to the public network. Weak authentication provides one of the easiest points of entry of a masquerade, since it makes it much easier for the attacker to gain access. And once the attacker or masquerader has been authorized for entry, then they may have full access to the data. And depending on the privilege level, they may be able to modify and delete software or data from your computer. So that's this week's tech term, masquerade. Back to you, Dave. Thanks, Andrea. You see, I'm 
masquerading. Uh, don't forget our Ask Dave hotline is open 24-7 just for you. Anytime you have a consumer electronics related question or concern, we want to hear from you. And then when you hear your call on the air on our national radio show, expect to hear from our prize closet because you'll be winning some cool goodies. Just pick up the phone anytime and give us a call 1-800-899-INTO. That's 1-800-899-4686. For more info on what we've featured on this ITTV update or any other videos and certainly information from any of our guests, be sure and visit our website anytime at your convenience at graveline.com or, if you prefer, intotomorrow.com. Thanks for tuning into Tomorrow. Watch for us next week from Las Vegas and the International CES. <laughs>